Hello and welcome everyone to their Invent Right TV show. My name is Andrew Krauss. I'm one of the co-founders here and we have a very special guest. We have Eric Johnson from Quick Trucks and he has a really, really cool product. He's been venturing his product, which is just a fancy way of making saying make it and sell it yourself. But he's also looking at licensing right now and he's got a kind of a licensing deal on the table. So it should be a very interesting interview. Him as an inventor, just the product itself is really cool. And then why is he trying to license it if he's already selling the product himself? So we're going to talk about these, these questions. And I'm going to introduce you to him in just a moment. But before I even introduce you to him, this is so rude, I'm going to introduce you to his product. So let's take a look. Here we go. All right, we're back. Eric, that is a really, really cool product, man. Thank um, you. you know, people always ask, like, how did you come up with that? Or have you have you been skating a lot your whole life, and you just yeah, were you frustrated? Was it a frustration you had, and you're like, I got to come up with a solution to this, or is it just like a random thought? Um, yeah, a couple of questions. I'll answer both of those. Yes, I've been skating a lot. Uh, been, I've been skateboarding since 1979. So oh, geez. You could do the math on that one. And um, yeah, I came up with it because I was late to get together to a session with some friends. And um, I wanted to change out my, um, you know, some people don't know the nomenclature of a skateboard. This is a deck. This, the suspension is a truck. And then these are obviously wheels. And so um, modern decks are pretty, pretty much um, like a, they're called popsicles, modern decks. And so they're shaped symmetrically front to rear. And then being that skateboarding has such a rich history, especially in Southern California, where I grew up, uh, you know, now they're making all of these reissue skateboard decks. So when you're a kid, you know, you could only get one a year because that's all your parents would get you. But when you're almost 50, you can kind of get whatever you want. So I wanted to ride a retro board and I was late to meet my friends. So I thought it would be really cool to be able to change my trucks from one deck to another when I want to. And that's how it started. Cool. That night after we um, slammed a bunch and, and hurt ourselves as skateboarders do, I was hanging out uh, in the hot tub with my buddy Tom and just telling him about my idea. And he was like, let's, let's try to do it. So we, we went down to my shop. I build motorcycles, so I've got a pretty good shop. And uh, we just started cutting pieces of plastic up. And, and that's really how the, uh, the genesis of it was all in one day. I thought of it, talked with a friend who's also a maker, and then we just started cutting plastic up. How long have you been selling the, the product? We went to market about five quarters ago, so just over a year. Okay. How how has the journey been? Has it been super like piece of cake, easy? <laughs> I know the industry that you're in is a different industry. You know, the, the skate culture is like there's something there. It's it's different than just a kitchen gadget or something else, you know. It's it's got a, a culture to it, which you probably like. I mean you're part of that, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Well I almost don't know anything else. You know, I've been so steeped in skateboarding my entire life that um, I knew I was going to be up against an uphill battle with innovation because skateboards have not evolved really much at all since, I mean, you would be hard pressed to see a difference between a skateboard from 1995 and today. Well, when I was when I was a kid, we we're, we're talking a while ago, and I had a skateboard. It wasn't a popsicle boards back then. Maybe they had those too, and I wasn't paying attention. But mine had a curved front, and then the back was like a, a straight wing. 
right. that that was like a Santa Cruz board, I think. Right. Um, yeah. I know, uh, uh, and popsicles weren't around yet. I'm sorry. They weren't around then. Okay. All right. So that's how old I am. <laughs> I was skating. I was skating at that time and before that too. So you you don't need to feel bad. <laughs> okay. All right. But um. So what was your question? You asked. Um, well, how has it been? So you know, being in skate culture and using skate products is very different than making one and trying to sell it. There's a whole business side of things. And yeah. um, I talking to you, I feel like you're a business person. You said I'm not a business person. That's not me. So um, what? Why do you? Why do you say that? And and how has it been being a business person or trying to be one or you know, and selling this product yourself? Yeah. Um, so no, it has not been easy, but, um, I don't know. Do you ever watch that show, uh, comedians in cars getting coffee? I've, I've seen it a few times. Yeah. The Seinfeld episode where, where our, our Jerry Seinfeld, I don't actually, all of them were with Seinfeld. Right. One of, one of the episodes he was talking to somebody and he said, you know, who's going to be okay. I see those skateboarders and they fall and they fall and they fall and they keep getting back up. And I say, that kid's going to be all right. And and that's skateboarders for you. And so, yeah, I'm not a business guy. Oh, I love that. you bringing that attitude to the business. Right. I mean, oh, that's great. Bring it to everything you do in life. And so that's what you need to succeed because you're going to screw up. Like, I think I told you about when I started my patent, I had a patent advisor at a community college in Idaho that said, yeah, you can do a patent yourself. Go ahead. And so I did, and it got rejected so hard. I mean, so hard. And I well, made, I, I, I think he was confused. I mean, we teach our students you can do a provisional patent because we done in common English. But we say, hey, it's, it's kind of nuts to write. I've met people have done it successfully. Write your own patent, you know. So it's much better to go fishing with a provisional for seventy five dollars, get a whole year to say patent pending, and then get a patent attorney to write a full utility if you get a licensing deal. But to write one up front. Man, right off the bat, you had that was your play. Like, oh damn, that was that was a mess. But it worked, and I fast tracked it. Total mistake. Don't fast track it. But for me, it ended up working. I spent the extra seven hundred bucks or whatever it was, um, and so I got the rejections really quickly. And so I was able to hand that to my uh, patent attorney that ended up writing the full utility oh, okay. not patent. And um, and it it really worked out. Okay. But, um, but I, that's I I do not I am not endorsing that path. But I screwed up. But in the end, it actually you know it, it did work out. Mm -hmm. And uh, and as far as building a business, launching the business, um, so timeline, you know I, I launched the business just over a year ago. But there were three, a little over three years before that of conception. Um, and then, you know, filing the patent pretty quickly, I started hearing, dude, this is, I can't believe this doesn't exist. You need to do it. And um, so I started the process of the patent simultaneously with product development. Um, initially, I started off with just a machinist, and then I found an engineer. Then I went to another engineer and had him revert, like, try to make it better. And, you know, I mean, and and I was involved. I have, I have an engineering mind. My grandfather was an inventor. Actually... Okay, so that that part, you know, you're, you're a skateboarder, you're going to fall down, you're okay, you're, you know, you work on bikes. That part you probably didn't have a big issue with. You you had issues, you had to fix it, but you're really into that. But now you got the business side of things. The, right. the the distribution, the sales, the stuff that maybe and so did you get a business partner to help you with that and stuff you you mentioned to me before we recorded here that you said um, you know, I, he handles the inventory because I'd probably just give it all away. Right. <laughs> so, uh, how how did you find him, and what skills does he have that you don't have? Oh yeah, very complimentary. Um, he was actually uh, I worked with him before. I had a, a professional. I'm a professional musician. That's why there are guitars on the wall. Um, he was uh, a drummer in my band, and I and I ran that band as a business, and so we worked together really well. Um, he has a lot of skills. His name is Josh, and he has a lot of skills at um, things I don't, tech stuff. So he built our website. He does all of our graphics. Um, 
he ha- he's very good. I'm not a paperwork guy. I'm an artist. I'm a creator. Um, he's very disciplined with... Um, I just trust him to uh, cross the cross the T's and dot the I's. Yeah, on. so you guys have complementary um, yeah. skills. Where do you have distribution? All right, that's always hard. It's hard to get distribution, isn't it? There's skate shops everywhere. There's online. There's like, where are you selling the product right now? You've been in business a year, year and a half or so. Um, so you know where we are right now. It's it's we're kind of cresting a. We're moving into a new era, a new phase, I would say, um, knowing that we would. But we start. I wanted to start out very simply, and um, even though I had like I I had T-shirts to sell that we could have sold as merchandise, decided not to put it on the website. We started with one product in two different packages, you know, so people had a choice. But one product, keep it very streamlined, mm-hmm. direct consumer. And that's how we started because we're manufacturing in the U.S. and we have since the beginning. Mm-hmm. So uh, margins are not as high as we would like yeah. them to be. So that's Sorry. one struggle. You're getting made in the U.S. The margins aren't as high as you want it to be. Right. So now we eventually, after several months of doing that direct to consumer, U.S. only, uh, COVID kind of kept it that way. It was yeah. Really hard exporting anything. Sure. Um, once COVID kind of loosened up, you know, we're the world is a buzz because this product has never existed. So we're getting contacted from literally the ends of the earth. We've sent them to Russia. We've sent them to Australia, all over Asia. I mean, just you name it, it's, it they're there. I just sent I, uh, a, a customer from Poland posted yesterday. That was cool. The first ones in Poland. So. Once that started happening, we started sending um, to customers, it became clear, you know, they're having to spend $40 shipping to get a little package this big, you know. Right. And so um, skate shops started contacting us. So we have a handful of skate shops um, that are willing to do it. You know, even with our low margins, it's still worth it to them. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but we're sharing. But there's know, how, how many skate shops are there in the U.S.? Do you have an idea? So many. I mean, okay. no idea. So you no barely. Idea. So if if you license this to somebody instead of venturing it, they would have that distribution. These big skateboard companies, truck companies, they're they're everywhere. So that. Right. But that's not what you're doing yet. Is it? sorry. Go ahead. One distribution company. I've one of the distribution companies I've spoken with had, I want to say, seven or eight hundred skate shops just hmm. in there. And that was just a percentage of the skate shops that were out there. Correct. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's the other way. Continue to venture it, use distributors, or license it to a big company, get royalties. But you are working on a licensing deal right now with, can we say the name of the company? Uh, I, I don't see why not. Okay, with, with Hamboards. And I want to throw up a video, guys. This, this video is really cool. It's like, it's surf skating. Is that the way you say it? Surf skate. These are, this is a sub-genre of surf skating. Okay. I didn't even know about surf skating. This is a sub-genre called surf training. Surf training, got it, got it. Okay, so let's take a look at the video, guys. Let's check this out. Eric, that's that's really cool, man. I I uh, I want to buy one of those. <laughs> I, wanna, I just want one. Yeah, they're so cool. The surf, Super fun. surf training. That's really cool. So, but here's so the reason why I wanted to bring this up is you're you're having fun right now, you know, venturing this product, but you you're going to be making some money doing this licensing deal, so you can put your mechanism on their device. Now it's. There's probably that's probably not a massive market, but to do that licensing deal, have some royalties come in, give them the exclusive for that niche, which is a, a niche, you know, in their particular market, and then you can continue to sell it. That's an example of venturing and licensing at the same time, you know. Right. Yeah. It, you know, I so one of the things that I did from the beginning, and I told my partner this is 
the patent and the trademarks belong to my holding company. And Quick Trucks is a company. And so as time goes on, I could release the company and license to my own company. Right. right now, you know, I can do whatever I want because I own the company and I own the holding company. But I have it set up so I can continue to license to not only other companies, but I can license to the company I started. Mm -hmm. That'll be very interesting to see. Because so let's talk about that. Let's talk about uh, licensing deals over there now. Um, it takes a lot of money to to sell a product. If you if you got distribution, let's say you got a distributor, and they're in all the skate shops. Let's say there's three thousand. I have no idea how many four thousand skate shops. Financially, would you be able to handle that right now? No. Yeah. Uh, no, I started this company on a shoestring, Andrew. <laughs> I really like. I mean, I literally sold a couple of motorcycles. You know, it started that way, kept reinvesting, you know, so at this point, I'm not taking a dime. I'm just reinvesting. Right. Just grow it, put it back in, grow it. And um, you mean you're not becoming a millionaire overnight? Not overnight. No. no. <laughs> that's, you know, that's I like that you say not overnight. I like that. I like I think that's great. That's cool. That's a horrible way to become a millionaire from everything that I've heard. You know. Yeah, and you you know you're from talking to you yesterday. You're, you're doing some smart things. You're finding some other niche markets. You found one to license into, but you found some other niche markets to sell into where it's low enough volume that you can handle it. Like because it's a cash flow. Cash flow will kill you. You get enough orders, the cash goes out, but it doesn't come out for a long time. I mean, these products could be sitting in stores for a while. And they might not pay you for quite some time. They might not pay you for ninety days. It might take a while to get the product. Like you might have that cash flow go out for three or four or five or six months and it doesn't come back unless you got a huge reservoir of cash you're screwed you know right. but but you're being smart you're going some of these niche markets and you're selling in these niche markets where you can handle the the demand there um, yeah and i don't like feeling desperate and i think if you get in over your head you know you're <clears throat> you're leveraging yourself so hard that you have a ton of debt um, you're given, you know, you're so desperate to get a deal with a skate shop that you go, yeah, oh yeah, you can have terms. We'll give you 30 days. We'll give you 90 days. And I have friends that are in the industry. They're just like, don't do it. He's like, mm -hmm. it makes my life a nightmare. And so I've just said, no, we're not doing terms. If you want the product, we're stoked. We want you to have the product. Here's our terms. Even if you get terms, though, it, it can take you a long time. You're manufacturing in the U.S. right now. But let's say you're trying to get the cost down, you're manufacturing overseas, it can take a while, you gotta give them the money, it takes a while to get over here, stuff gets caught in transit like you wouldn't believe with the supply chain issues now. And all that time the money went out and it's not coming back. And then on top of it, you give 60 day terms to a skate shop, all that, you need to have a big freaking bankroll. I mean, we're talking two, three, four, five, half a million, million dollars if you're, you know, getting out or more. It depends on the price point of the product, right? Right. I mean, and people don't realize that. You do. You keep saying you're not a business person, but I think you are. Uh, I think you are. <laughs> well, you, I mean, you learn, right? I mean, you, you yeah. Learn. So when I approach the business, and I think this is this is a telling thing about me, and I think, I don't know, maybe it'll help other people. When I started the business, I said, listen, I'm not, I've not run a business. I see the potential in this. It's genuinely terrifying. But you know what I could do? I could fold out a table. I could go to a farmer's market or a trade show. I could put product on the table, and I could sell that. And so from that perspective, I have like this like rock bottom business that I'm like, I'm confident I could do that. I could sh explain what I'm doing. I could give you a good product. I can take your money. And so from there, I thought, okay. Then I think about it like, okay, we can do the same thing on a website, right? But I still have that farmer's market mentality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that keeps me out of trouble where I feel all this pressure that I need to please everybody right when they want it. Right. And, um, you know, we I would not be in business if I tried to please everybody right off the bat. Yeah. But I'm honest. And I talked to somebody yesterday. There's a um, 
pretty big company that wants exclusive distribution in a very large part of the world. And I was speaking with them yesterday and I just, I'm just straight up. I'm like, listen, man, like we, we got narrow margins. We know where we need to go. I'm working on it. And the guy was like unfazed. He, he got it. He heard what I'm saying. He sees the opportunity. And he's like, yeah, we still want to work with you. Like, we'll grow with you. You know, mm-hmm. let's go. But let's take baby steps. And I'm like, yep, that's what we need to do. So it looks like that's going to go through. That's and great. Instead of trying to be bigger than I am, I'm just like, listen, dude, we're two skateboarders. We're making a good product. People want it. Here's where we're at. Here's where we're going. And he, yeah. he got it. And, and that worked. So. Try to be bigger than they are. You know? Yeah. At, at the same time, I, I make a joke of it. I say, you know, when you're licensing, you can have delusions of grandeur and you're not delusional because you can be and do whatever that big company you license to can do. Now, with uh, surf training, guys, that's a niche market. You're going to make some royalties there. It's not going to add up to huge amounts because it's it's a niche, but it's nice and you can still you know, license in, in other areas. Um, But when you license to that giant company, you are that giant company. You could have, don't like to use the word instant, although I will, instant distribution in all those places. Um, But, you know, you lose a little control. You you, you know, they want to make it pink. You want to make it purple. You know, you're you're really into your product and everything. It's not all roses. You know, you're going to lose some stuff. But also the benefit there is being first to market in a big way is the best form of protection better than any patent. You know, even though you got a pretty solid patent, that's great protection. Other guys don't want to get in on it. Right now where you're at, you're at risk for somebody coming in, getting around your patent, doing it a different way and and, and knocking it off. Um, so it's always good to have additional provisionals in your pocket where those people can't see them. You know, that's always a good thing. But, but you know, I, um, I think that the big guys, they'd rather just, you know, and it would be a buyout plus a licensing deal, right? And then you get royalties forever. Sometimes people say, well, can I just sell my company? Well, your company's not that big yet. It has a lot. They need to pay you for all your know-how and your inventory and all that stuff and your company because you have built a company. But the real money is those royalties with the massive volume they can do. So you can have delusions of grandeur, but... Um, and I think that in other industries, I'd be more concerned about it. In your industry, I'm not so that concerned about it. It's kind of slow moving. It's not a lot of new stuff. You're, you're extremely innovative compared to their products in this category. Right. Um, so normally I don't say, you know, start a business to prove it out. Like I'm like, no, it's a kitchen gadget. They're going to see it. They believe in it or they don't. But right. in your industry where you, you need to create an opinion with skaters that are, are kind of tribal and they have very strong feelings and you got this cool young guy that has this company with this cool product what you've done for your particular product in your industry i think is perfect um if you want the perfect create the, to create the perfect storm later to license to a very large company and go big um but maybe you never do that you know maybe you get a good distributor you save up your cash you, you get you can do accounts receivables financing stuff all that starts to get a little scary but and get the money coming in and then you got to be careful about it and you seem to be and you just grow the business into something great that's a perfectly valid path too and you yeah. retain control because if you license to a giant skateboard company they're going to do what they're going to do they might ask you your opinion and stuff but you know you're going to lose some control Right. You know, one of the things I really don't want to be is the biggest anchor to the success of this technology, mm-hmm. you know? And so if there comes a time or when there comes a time that it's obvious to me that there would be a company that would be able to do a much better job, I've taken the product from, you know, a, an idea to functioning to legendary skateboarders asking me for yeah that's cool and you know hot you know like really respected skateboarders riding it and 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 standing up in front of me and saying no dude this product is legit like real skateboarders ride this getting it to that point 
is was really hard. Like you said, it's very tribal, very hard to get into break into the core of skateboarding because we grew up, you know, really kind of having to protect ourselves. And so we don't want any kitschy like gimmicks. Right. So doing something innovative that is a utility. Um, it, it's hard to get that across that it's mm -hmm. not a gimmick. Having gotten over that hump, um, at some point, like I said, I don't want to be the biggest anchor to the success of the product and to serve the customer. Well, you know, you said that to me yesterday, too. I found that to be incredibly level-headed. An inventor that feels like their product is their baby uh, doesn't normally say that. It, it makes me think that if at some point you wanted to license out to a large company, you're, you're, they're going to look at you and go, this guy's level-headed. And they might actually want you to be a lot more involved than you think because of that. You know, because right. you're like, you're part of the brand. They're buying your company, they're licensing it, and you're part of that. And they, and the skate industry likes that. They want that. They might really like it. Uh, they might absorb it into their brand. They might keep it over here. Just, you know, quick, trick, quick trucks owned by, I won't say a name of a company, but, you know, you know we talked about a few yesterday. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, what the, the, my favorite thing that you said in this whole interview is about skaters, about Jerry Seinfeld on the, the comedians in cars or whatever saying, um, you know who's going to be OK? Those skaters, they keep falling down, they keep getting up. And then you have that attitude and just that that visual. I think if everybody that's an entrepreneur, whether they're licensing or venturing, venturing thinks about it themselves as a tough skater that's always going to get back up again, no matter what. Yep. Um, Come back the next day, like literally, this is what, when I was skating hard, we would go jump down, you know, a 10 stair handrail staircase, break an arm because we didn't get the trick we were trying to film. You go to the hospital, you get a cast, you're there the next day. <laughs> but, yeah. but here's, I'll add something to what Jerry said. You learn from it. You're like, right. okay, I, I broke my arm because I did that. And you learn from it and you do it different, but keep yeah. doing it at the same time. You're not going to keep skating because you're just going to be in body cast. <laughs> right. Absolutely. You do learn. Yeah. That's the only way to learn. Yeah. Only learn. I, I want to share another kind of cool story. There's a, um, I have a friend in San Diego that owns one of the largest uh, skateboard distribution companies in San Diego. And um, just talking to him and just showed him, I was like, hey, Todd, like, you know, what do you think? And he thought it was cool. And, and um, you know, we, we talked about doing some stuff, but the timing wasn't right. But I'm like, man, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, this is terrifying to me to like start it as a business. And mm -hmm. he said, you know what, Eric, none of us did. You just do it. You just you just go for it, and and it was that mentality of like you fail, you learn, you adjust. You know, but but you just went for it. But you also had a level have a level head, and you also think about stuff. I mean, just going for it, not having any clue at all about what path you're going to going down, not analyzing your next step. You know, that's a recipe for disaster. So just going for it but also using your brain and asking other people when you don't know something, finding your business partner, you know, it's your friend. I, I have so many mentors in so many ways. Yeah. The way I could have done this by myself. I consult and I consult and I consult, find people smarter than you about certain things. Right. That care about you and what you're doing. Um, you know, I, I won't share the, the, the ways that I found the mentors, but find mentors in every aspect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if I love you're it. wrong in it, I still think it's important to bounce ideas. Yeah. Well, um, so I'm so glad that we were able to talk to you. I think everybody learned a lot. They learned a little bit about what it takes to run a business, about your passion, about your product, about licensing slash venturing. About, I mean, th I think they learned a lot from hearing you tell your story. and. I want to invite more people on where they're like, here's my product. You know, when you're licensing, you don't really publicly disclose it. So I can't do that that often because we tell people, keep it quiet, show it to the companies, right? But when we can, like, because you're venturing it and selling it, it's great because it really resonates with people. 
the stories resonate. When you tell a story and it's a person and it's a product, they, they remember, they're going to remember this stuff that you shared. And I just really appreciate that. Well, I appreciate you reaching out and um, it's, um, it is humbling and an honor to get to, to share it with you cool. guys. So you guys, you guys have been really um, one of those mentors, you know, I've, I've been watching um, IGA and, you know, so I mean, you guys are part of it too. So I appreciate you. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So Eric Johnson from quicktrucks.com. We'll put the link down in the description as well. Um, as well as uh, handboards, because that's a cool, cool product too. Uh, there you go, trucks. K S. It is spelled. Yeah, I see on my notes I spelled it wrong, but you, you'll find them. You'll find them. We'll look down in the description. Um, anyway, take care. Keep inventing, everybody. We'll catch up with you guys next time. See ya. Bye. Thanks.